Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in the previous video, we looked at another means of constructing energy balances like those you see in our screen right here. And this was for the single family home energy model that we've been building throughout the series so far. At this point, I think we have a clear enough idea of what is driving the energy use of our single family home here so that we can propose some design changes that would improve the energy efficiency of the house. So just as a refresher, the Heating energy use is one of the largest terms out of our entire end use summary here. And we can see that also clearly in the chart that our heating bars within our energy balance here are one of the largest of all the terms in the model. And looking at the flip side of our energy balance, we can see the main reason for that is primarily because of infiltration. And we can probably guess that we have such a high infiltration term in a single family home like this because there is such a high surface area to volume ratio for this building being given that it is so small. For a similar reason, we have an opaque conduction term that is much higher than usual. So if we're going to propose a single set of strategies to have the biggest impact on energy reduction for a building like this, we should probably be targeting these two terms as much as possible. So let's say for argument's sake that we are going to do an energy retrofit of this single family home. And this retrofit will involve the replacement of the heating and cooling systems as routine maintenance would have it. And I can attest to the fact that the real building we are modeling here has some fairly old heating and cooling systems that should be replaced pretty soon. But in addition to that, we'll also look into whether it might be worthwhile to invest in some strategies that tackle this infiltration and this opaque conduction. So maybe we'll say that we'll consider replacing some of the insulation in the attic with a thicker level of insulation that will reduce this opaque conduction. At the same time, we can make sure that that insulation has a vapor barrier included with it, which should cut down on the air leakage that we get through the roof and hopefully put a good dent in this infiltration term. In addition to that, maybe we'll replace the windows and make sure that the edges of those windows are really tightly sealed with the rest of the building to try and minimize air infiltration. And needless to say, we get out the weather stripping and caulking and really try to seal up any existing holes that we found in the house. So together, we'll say this, this energy retrofit, we want to evaluate whether it'd be truly worthwhile to invest in something like this as we're replacing the heating and cooling systems. And we can use our energy model to evaluate how much savings we would have from such a retrofit strategy. So first things first, I want to make a note of the current energy use that we have for this baseline building that we've tried to construct here. So our energy use in total, let's see, I'm going to copy this into a panel so we can compare this before and after snapshot of our energy use intensity. So I'm going to copy the data of our EUI to a panel and I'm going to paste it into a new panel so that we can easily compare this with the, the new energy use intensity that we'll have. And I'll just label this EUI baseline. And maybe we'll put the units there, kilowatt hours per meter squared so that we don't forget what we're looking at here. And then I'll also copy these end use summary or the end use breakdown here. And let's see if I bring up a panel here to try and paste that into, well, it looks like I, I'll need to actually not just simply paste the, the copy data into a panel here, but I'll actually also need to double click here and then paste the full list of all these end uses into the panel and just hit OK. And in order to get it to show up just like this, maybe I'll, I'll right click on that panel and set it to multi-line data. So I'm doing this all just so that I can record the actual breakdown and compare it to, to this baseline UI after I've, I've made the changes. The other thing that maybe I'll do is that I'll try and fix this energy intensity bar chart so that I can compare an energy balance from before and after. And the easy way I'll do that is just by setting the max to a nice round number. Maybe we'll set it to 24 kilowatt hours per square meter. So if I plug this into our legend parameters that are going into our monthly chart, you'll see, okay, uh, well, it's still not quite as balanced as I would have liked it to be because we're, we're still at uh, minus 22 down there. So I'll also change the minimum. Uh, let's see, I'll bring up a native grasshopper negative component, which will just take this, this max value of 24, it'll negate that so that then I can plug in this negative 24 as our min. Okay. All right. And that's kind of fixed the legend. It's not only made it easier to compare with the energy balance 
of our retrofit strategy, but it also just makes the boundaries of our chart look a little nicer as they are now. So, okay, so I think I've got enough. I've recorded my UI baseline that we're going to compare things to. Uh, what else? I've, I've up fixed the legend parameters of our monthly charts so that we'll be able to do comparisons between this and our updated strategy. And now I think I'm ready to actually go and, and apply that strategy to my model. So I'm going to go over to the component, this model to OSM component that was actually executing the simulation. And I'm going to double click this toggle to set it to false. And that'll make sure that as I'm making edits to our model that, that is going into this component, we're not going to rerun the simulation every time we make an edit. And maybe just to do a little more cleanup here, we don't really need this annual loads component given that we're constructing this whole energy balance this way. So I'm just going to go and delete that HB annual loads. And while I'm at it, why don't I just make Grasshopper full here? Okay. All right, so we set the toggle to false on the on the simulation, but we've still got our numbers recorded in static panels here that aren't connected to that. And now we can go back over to where we constructed our model and start to make some edits here. So if we really wanted to target that level of infiltration, we can make an adjustment to the program that is being specified for this, this room here. And so the easy way to do that is that we'll, we can use one of the components in the loads tab here that is just called HB apply load values. And what this component can do, it, is, it allows you to take either a room that you've constructed already or a program like this mid-rise apartment, and you can change any of the parameters of that program or of that room uh, by plugging in a value here. And you can see one of these values is the infiltration per exterior area. And so that's exactly what we can tweak right now. We can tweak this program object in order to have a different infiltration per exterior area that is reflective of after our energy retrofit. So first off, let's just do a refresher of what exactly our infiltration per square meter is right now. And if I go over to our color room attributes that we used earlier in the series, and I'll turn the preview back on on this by right clicking in the middle of the component and selecting preview. Then I can go over to the Rhino scene. Maybe we'll go into perspective mode here so that I can see our design a little more easily. And right now we're just looking at the program type here. But if I were to go and select, let's see, infiltration per exterior area, we can see that by default our baseline model here has an infiltration of about 0 0.0006 or so. I mean, I'm rounding up here. And that is cubic meters per second per square meter of exterior area. And if we were to actually look at the infiltration per exterior input on this component here, you'll see that it gives us some general recommendations for typical types of infiltration you'll have on a building, depending upon whether it's leaky or average or pretty tight. Now, given the age of this building, I highly doubt that we'd be able to get this all the way to a very tight building. I mean, that level of, of infiltration is usually only reserved for buildings like passive house buildings where you have a lot of vapor barriers, a lot of layers that defend you against the air seeping into your building. But you'll see right now that our building is fairly leaky to begin with, which is probably not that far off the mark for an older residential building like this. And so I think we can probably get this down to an average building if we were to replace the, the vapor barrier in the attic insulation and really try to seal up the edges of the windows. I think it's reasonable for us to get down to a 0 0.003 infiltration per exterior area with this retrofit. So what I'm going to do in order to make this change to my model here is that I'm going to kind of insert this component in between our, our program here of mid-rise apartment and the room. And let me make a little more space here for myself so that we can easily see what we're about to do. So if I go and I plug in the mid-rise apartment into this HB apply load values component, you'll see that out of the component, we are going to get a modified version of this program. And you can see it's added a little extra unique ID because we've edited the, the program a little bit. But importantly, because we didn't plug in anything for these values right here, nothing has actually changed when we passed it through this component. So in order to actually make a meaningful change, I'm going to bring up a panel that has 0 0.0003 inside of it, and I'm going to plug that into the infiltration here. So if I double click on the canvas and I type double quotations to bring up a panel, 
and then I'm going to type 0 0.0003 and then hit enter. And this will give me a panel that has this new infiltration that I want to apply to this building. And if I go and I plug that into this infiltration for exterior area, I'm going to get that modified program out of here. And now if I plug in this modified program to my room so that it's getting this, this modified version of the mid-rise apartment instead of the original one, lo and behold, we can see that, yes, we get a lower flow per exterior area in our visualization here of our room attributes. So, okay, so that's one, one change that we've made to our model that we want to understand here. And maybe I'll just kind of group this together. Now, this is kind of our program creation step that's going along here. And the other change that I'll make is going to be, I think, a little more straightforward to implement within the Grasshopper script. You guys remember that we chose an, an older version of the building code to represent our building constructions. And this was the code from all the way back in 2004, which is, I think, about when probably the windows were last replaced on, the, on this single family home. So if we were to update this to the latest code, essentially saying that we're going to replace the insulation in the attic with the new levels of insulation, we're going to replace the windows. I think simply changing this from a 2004 code to the 2019 code, the latest one, if you guys will remember in the previous video, I think that should be good enough for representing our, our energy retrofit here. Granted, there may be a few other changes that are going to happen alongside this. I mean, it may change the wall insulation just a little. I guess we can we can preview this just to make sure. So why don't I turn the preview off on this color room attributes? I'll turn the preview on on our color face attributes. And we can see, I mean, we'll, we'll see if the, the walls may change from this R12. We'll see about that. But the critical ones that I think we really want to understand are these, the windows that we're going to be replacing and this, and this attic floor in, in particular this, this, that's applied to the roof ceiling of this model. So if I go ahead, I'm just going to double click on this text that describes our construction set here. I'm just going to change 2004 to 2019. And I'm going to hit OK. And as soon as I do this, we should see those construction chains. So actually, OK, the walls did not change. So that's good to know. So we aren't going to be modeling any change to the walls. But we do see that the roof insulation got a little thicker. We're now at R38 in IP instead of R30. And the windows are a little bit better here. OK. And so with this, we might also say that we're replacing the attic you know, with, with a vapor barrier that gives us this infiltration value. So I think this is a good enough representation of this strategy here that we want to test and apply to see how well it changes our energy consumption. So I'm going to make this grasshopper large, and I'm going to go back over to our model to OSM component that's running the simulation. And I'm just going to set this to true, double click to set that to true. And we will see now what the end use intensity is after we've made this kind of energy retrofit. And that was only about 10 or 15 seconds there. It's We're just loading up the results into Grasshopper right now. And we can see, yes, lo and behold, our EUI has definitely gone down with this retrofit. So importantly, if you remember, our heating energy use was pretty high, around 93, 94 or so. That has dropped down to something around 62. So we've cut our, our heating bill in almost down to like two thirds of what it was, maybe even a little more than two thirds. So we can automatically off the bat, knowing what the utility bills are for, for my mother-in-law's single family home here, we could already begin to get an estimate of how much savings we'd have by replacing the insulation in the attic, replacing the windows, and trying to really patch up those holes. Overall, we've really dropped that EUI by a pretty significant amount here. We've also dropped the cooling, so that insulation not only helped us really reduce our heating, but this cooling has dropped from about 20 kilowatt hours per square meter to about 13 and a half, or maybe a little about 14 or so. The other types of energy use, understandably, didn't change that much because they aren't really being driven by the insulation. Our, our usage of interior lights and interior equipment is driven by those schedules, so we shouldn't expect those to change. But let's go and see if our energy balance changed all that much. If I go over to top view, and maybe I should turn the preview off here on our color face attributes. I'm just going to right click and turn the preview off here. And we can definitely see that these bars have shrunk substantially from what we had with our previous model. So we can really see, and we could see that's primarily because this infiltration dropped pretty steeply. 
I guess our opaque construction didn't really drop as much as maybe we'd really like, but at least now the fact that it's comparable to this infiltration is, is showing us we really did take a bite out of the infiltration in this model that we have here. And yeah, we could also see that because of that infiltration reduction too, that our active cooling is down here in the summer. Okay. So let's say that I, I go over to my mother-in-law and I say, all right, I think we can save about this much in, your, in terms of your heating utility bills. We can save a little bit on your cooling energy use, the, the air conditioner that you're running. If we were to replace the in insulation in your attic with a better version that has a vapor barrier. And we work the calculations out. Maybe let's say we realize this a retrofit like this might pay for itself in somewhere around 10 years or so. And while this was certainly worth it for someone really living in this house for a long time, maybe we'll say my mother-in-law is not sure yet if, if she'll be in this place for that long. And we come to realize that, all right, maybe, maybe this is a tougher sell than we realized and that it's not truly worth it to, to invest in it as we're replacing the heating and cooling systems. But utility bills are not the only way that we can argue for a certain strategy using an energy model like this. Because if you guys remember I mentioned in this retrofit scenario that we'd be replacing the heating and cooling systems. And those heating and cooling systems themselves cost money. The nice thing about replacing insulation like this and really lowering the amount of infiltration and the loads that you have in the space is that you can actually buy a smaller heating and cooling system when you do a retrofit like this. And so we have yet to really account for the fact that we might actually save money up front by being able to get a smaller heating and cooling system that costs less while we did this energy retrofit. So in the next video, we're going to be using our energy model to understand the impact that this retrofit option has on the size of the heating and cooling systems that we need for a house like this. And we'll try and see if maybe we can cut down this payback period to something a little shorter. So thank you guys for following along in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.